The early Zealand League certainly benefited the Athenians, and it's important to remember some of the precedents and the trends that had been set by Athens right at the start. Remember, Athens had shown that she was not afraid of forcing states into the Delian League, such as in the case of Euboea and Charistus. She'd also shown, uh, in the example of Skyros, that she was quite happy to take over uh, and take control over key trade and grain routes. And, and even legitimate activities, such as the attack on Eon, had benefited the Athenians. The important thing to remember from the early Delian League is that it essentially gave Athens the potential to turn into an empire. Now where we see these, um, uh, this potential starting to be increased is in our next uh, set of key events. Uh, and we can start off with Naxos in 469 BC. Um, Naxos, from what we know, there's not much evidence in the, in the sources. Thucydides doesn't really spend a lot of time on it. Um, we know that, that Naxos had refused to pay its tribute. Thucydides thinks this is a big deal. In fact, he says that it's the first time the constitution of the League was broken. Now, were the Dealing League and the Athenians right in attacking Naxos and forcing it back into the Dealing League? Well, technically speaking, Naxos had broken its oath. The Persians were still a threat to mainland Greece. However, it's still an attack against an ally, and Naxos is rather brutally forced back into that league. It gets its fleet confiscated, its walls demolished, and it's reduced uh, to a tribute-paying um, state. The big, big, big event that really um, uh, showed that Athens and the Dean League was working and stopping the Persian threat came in 468 BC, where Kimon led um, assault defeated a large Persian fleet in southern Turkey at Eurymedon. Now, um, obviously, it's a big, big, big um, advantage for Athens and for, and for the Greeks and showed the deal in league was working because Persia was now unable to invade Greece. Um, but technically speaking, if Persia was now unable to invade Greece, then surely there's no need for the Dealing League. Because Athens kept the Dealing League, it showed Athens' increasing appetite for imperialism. So Naxos, a bit of a tick and a cross. You're admitting clearly a tick, but then surely any event after um, is a big, big no-no. Um, and Athens was, was starting to bully and brutally control its allies to force them into the league. This is uh, shown best in, the, in our events at Thasos. Uh, in 465 BC. Um, the important thing is, is that this is an event, an event after Eurymedian, so technically there's no need for a dealing league, and more importantly, it's all to do with the dispute that Athens and Thasos had over gold and silver mines in Thrace. Um, what's more alarming for Athens with the revolt of Thasos is that, crucially, it was too rich and too powerful an ally to lose, and that's why the Athenians resorted to sieging Thasos. Now, Thasos is important not only just for Athens and its relationship with the Dealing League, but also Athens' relationship with Sparta. So the dispute had been over the ownership of mines, the revolt had been after Euromidian, but the important thing with Thasos is that they asked for Sparta, uh, Sparta for aid, and crucially, the Spartans agreed. Um, however, Sparta was unable to send aid because of a hell of a um, revolt triggered by an earthquake. Uh, the Athenians obviously didn't know that Sparta had agreed to help Thasos, and that's why Cimon, um had sent a troop of Athenian hoplites to Sparta. These troops were unceremoniously dismissed, uh, and Athens was humiliated. Um, so, basically, Athens was humiliated, but Thasos didn't receive any reinforcements whatsoever. The Athenians sieged and, uh, and forced Thasos back into the dealing league. Um, Thasos's walls were torn down, its fleet was confiscated, and again reduced to a tribute paying status. Now, the revolt of Thasos has severe consequences for Cimon, the leader of the Dealing League up until that point, but again also Athens' relationship with its allies. Um, Cimon, um, if you remember, had always been a little bit different than other Athenians in that he was uh, pro Spartan. He had referred to Athens and Sparta as yoke partners, the idea of the yoke being Greece and Sparta and Athens pulling the Greeks and working together. So therefore, because he wanted Athens and Sparta to work together, he's probably unlikely to turn Athens into an empire. That would have provoked Sparta. Uh, the problem for Kimo is that he spent his entire political career trying to get Athens and Sparta to work together. The revolt of Thasos 
had shown that that was not going to happen and he lost a massive amount of political prestige. What this then meant, the idea that Sparta agreed to help face off and then Sparta humiliating Athens by sending the hoplites home meant that Cimon was exiled and in his place we get Pericles who has no such qualms about turning Athens into an empire and thereby that has real major repercussions for Athens' relationship with its own allies, but also Athens' relationship with Sparta.